Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Representative Holland, welcome to the committee. Oh, thank you. Um, I want to jump right into an issue of the Endangered Species Act. Mm -hmm. And the question is, when do you believe an endangered species has recovered? You want to go? And when it has recovered, do you support delisting and returning wildlife management back to the state? Senator, of course, all of those decisions I'm, are based on science, as they should be. And um, I, I appreciate uh, the question. I, I would look forward to, if there's any issues of that nature, if I'm confirmed, being briefed right. on so, them. So we'll get into the science then. Yeah. Um, do you know what the recovery criteria are for the grizzly bear in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem? Specifically, no, sir. So, I so the, the, the answer is 500 bears. Um, and would you happen to know how many bears we currently have in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem? I do not. So um, the most conservative estimate is 728, well above the recovery target. Many estimate it's closer to 1,000 bears, mm -hmm. uh, well above the recovery criteria, well above carrying capacity. Yet on May 7, 2019, you co-sponsored legislation that provided federal protections for the grizzly bear in perpetuity, forever. Why would you sponsor a bill like that when the science tells us the bear numbers are well above the recovery targets? Uh, I imagine at the time uh, I, was, I was caring about the bears. And why don't you believe the grizzly management should return back to the states because once the recovery targets are met? Well, I, I'm not saying that it shouldn't be returned back to the states. But, but that's what you, your legislation you co-sponsored said, is that you would keep it in federal protections forever in perpetuity. Well, I, uh, I would be happy to take a look at the issue, Senator, if, if, and if I can help with that issue. Of course, I would love to speak with you more about it. Okay. Um, on November... 19th, 2020, you said that if you had it your way, and I quote, you'd stop oil and gas leasing on public lands. As secretary, uh, you will get to have it your way. Will you recommend extending the leasing moratorium? And how do you justify this moratorium with the requirements of the federal law under the Mineral Leasing Act? Senator, it's my understanding that it is a pause on just new leases, not existing uh, valid leases. And if I'm confirmed as secretary, it is President Biden's agenda, not my own agenda, that I would be moving forward and uh, appreciate your advice on this issue. Um, over the last two years, you made numerous statements in opposition to energy development, including, and I quote you, no new pipelines in August of 2018. You called for a ban on fracking in 2020. Oil and gas development on public lands generates huge revenues for local schools, essential services. I have one county in Montana that over 90% of the revenues go to their schools come from pipelines. Unfortunately, this is not the case for wind and solar development on federal lands. What is your plan to make up for any lost local revenue for public safety in children's education? Senator, uh, as I mentioned earlier, if, if I'm confirmed as secretary, it is President Biden's agenda that I would move forward, not my own. And, um, and I absolutely, nobody wants children to not you, have you, you, you earlier said you want to let the science and the data dictate policy and outcomes, if I could somewhat paraphrase what you said. So I assume you'd want to make sure you look at the science and the data and not just blindly follow any administration. Well, I, I apologize, Senator. Yes, the science and the data, I assuming would go without saying because I realize that the department relies on science, but um, but do, do you support a, a, a broader sense? Do you support a ban on fracking and no new pipelines? Uh, Senator, President Biden does not support a ban on fracking, is my understanding, and it would be his agenda that we would. Yeah, but do you personally support a ban on fracking and no new pipelines? Senator, if I could say, if I am confirmed as secretary, I would be uh, serving at the pleasure of the president, and it would be his agenda that I would move forward. On October 8th, 2020, you stated, quote, anyone who says we have to sacrifice jobs for clean energy is just trying to scare us. We have a county, Fallon County, where Baker, Montana is. Uh, six people just lost their jobs and their benefits, union jobs, directly because of President Biden's executive actions 
what jobs can they turn to now? What do I tell these 60 families that just lost their jobs as a result of President Biden's executive action? Senator, I, I want you to know that I, I understand what that's like. I have struggled myself as well and, and, been, and been without a job at various times in my life. I will do everything I can. As I said, I mean it. I will work my heart out for every American. And if we can move President Biden's agenda forward together, uh, we can create those millions of jobs. And I have every, um, I have every faith that that's something that we'll be able to yeah, do. Yeah, one of the ironies is these executive actions are actually increase emissions, not decrease emissions. The Keystone Pipeline was a zero net carbon uh, project here by 2030. How do we address the increase in emission caused by President Biden's actions we've seen over the last month? Senator, I would be happy to be briefed on the amount of emissions. And um, if I'm confirmed, absolutely work with you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, out of time, I must tell you, I'm just concerned about proceeding with this nomination. Uh, the track record and the ideology in the past, I think, will perpetuate more divisiveness and will certainly harm Montana's economy. And that's why I have some concerns, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, 